Hi guys, it's Kudu from Cape Town, etc. Anarchy, unrest, a modern day catastrophe. Worse than World War II. Really? Cape Town's current water crisis has us all shook. As we slip closer and closer to day zero, the city and its people go into survival mode. We look beyond the screaming headlines and coca conspiracy theories and ask actual water experts to break it down for us. So what do we know? One. We consume over 600 million liters of water per day instead of the targeted 450 million liters per day. Two, only 35% of people are using the prescribed 87 liters of water. Three, as of February 1st, the prescribed amount of water per person per day will be cut down to 50 liters. Four, dam levels are critically low, dropping at 1% every week. Five, if day zero happens, it will be on April 16th but this is subject to change as it has been pushed back before. Six, the city will use groundwater, desalination and recycling to meet demand. How did we get here? So there are, there are two things that one has to talk about, you know, that one thing is a, is a drought. You have a meteorological drought, which is, which, is, which is rainfall, essentially. And then this can translate, but not necessarily have to, into hydrological drought, which is the amount of water that flows in, in the rivers. And that hydrological drought can translate into a, a, a water shortage. And then that one can translate into water crisis, as we have now, you know. And essentially it's a really a one in a thousand coincidence of three drought years in a row where the water supply isn't able to meet the demand. Now the demand hasn't been particularly great. We've had a fairly stable demand over the last 15 to 17 years despite population growth because of very good planning. But what we've had now is three seriously dry winters and even that seriously dry is a matter of opinion because not everybody has had a dry winter in the Western Cape, but the water hasn't gone into the catchment area, so we haven't had water in the dams. So every year we've used water out of the dams, probably be about half the dam's volume we use in a year, and then come winter that dam has to fill up again, and for three years it is not filled up. So we've been looking at a dwindling supply of water, and right now the dams go down by about one percentage point every week, and we're looking at 14, 15 weeks of water left. So when will it rain again? It's not like this that we'll have a permanent drought. You know, we will have, that, that drought will get broken. We'll, uh, we'll have wetter years. We'll have years with a lot of rainfall. We just don't know when. You know, perhaps it will happen uh, next year or in two years' time. Is the city's response too little, too late? Whether the city has left it too late is a good question then. Could they have anticipated this? They probably should have anticipated, they probably should have created scenarios that said what if we have a third year of drought. What they could have done is very tricky. From an economic perspective, I'm sure they were limited in their options. From a realistic point of view, their best option was to ask Cape Townians to use less water. I've got a funny feeling Cape Townians haven't done their bit. What does the city have to say? And we had always planned to augment the water, but in terms of the planning protocols and scenarios, it wasn't expected that we'd need to bring in the additional augmentation until 2019, 20, around about that point in time. So the city embarked on dealing with this drought by saying, we are going to roll out augmentation as rapidly as we can. And we'd previously, through the normal planning, explored the options of using groundwater more, more so, and to use reuse of wastewater effluent, treating it up to potable standards, and then of course desalination. So we did extensive work on exploring the groundwater option, particularly in the TMG, the Table Mountain Group of Aquifers, which is a highly fractured rock zone underlying the Cape Folded Mountain Belt, extending way past outside of the Cape Town area from from Reinsdorp to Port Elizabeth effectively, but we obviously focused our investigations on what was close to our, our infrastructure, dams. And we are now working drilling in those identified best areas to extract water from that aquifer. And that's part of the plan that we've, we've accelerated. Where are we with desalination? Desalination is expensive. Um, it's the most expensive of all those options. And we, we, we tried to implement some rapid application of desal, went out to tender, got feedback, 
in the process realized we were getting in prices that were way over what we expected and way over, certainly highly in, high in excess of what our current costs of water. So it would mean a massive hike in, in tariffs that would be necessary to cover it. And we then got international expert opinion from the World Bank, from various other sources locally as well. And their recommendations were that nowhere in the world had ever been achieved to accelerate large-scale desal effectively. You would get companies saying, yes, we can build it in that time. You, you give the tender out based on a time scale. And as you get into it, you realize they're slipping and they're never going to make it. But you can't cancel it. So we chose not to go ahead with all of those. We've, we've gone ahead with some of them. And we're still looking at the impact of how, we, how rapidly we're going to get the water out of the Cape Flats aquifer and make, take decisions on the rest of the desal options. What we're rather going to do is roll out longer term desalination plans uh, and, and design plants that can be built over a long, 18, 24 month period that can give us uh, you know, up to 100, 150 megaliter a day options, but uh, instead of trying to accelerate them in the short term. Why haven't residents responded positively? And I think because in survival mode, your first instinct is to look after yourself. So people are saying, well, I'm not really going to panic. I'm going to keep using the water I have to use because that's the way my lifestyle is suited and that's what I need. Some people obviously have taken it very, very seriously. They've installed water tanks, they've looked at boreholes, they've looked at cutting down their water usage. And of course, many of us are recycling our, our water. We're taking our grey water, we're flushing it down the toilet, we're looking very carefully at how we use water. And many people are. The city says it's only 35% of the population, which begs the question, why are the other 65% of the population not doing it? Large areas of Cape Town are going to see huge pressure reductions in their water supply, and we'll be rolling this out more and more over the, over the next few weeks. And in that way, obviously, trying to depress the demand as much as possible. We will, we will not be moving to what's called water shedding, where you physically sh shut the taps off, if you like, or the valves off into a supply area, because we, we know from experience internationally that it is, you don't end up saving water. You more often, well, the, the average is that you end up wasting more water than you hope to save. Are we doomed? Uh, we expect intensification or increase in, in floods, in extreme events, in extreme rainfall events. We see uh, essentially increase in droughts in the, uh, throughout Southern Africa. We also have more and more extreme rainfall events. You know, for example, I mean, the, the, the extreme rains from Kaisatan from last year, it's sort of zero or Hauteng. How do we survive this? Right, we need to do something more to, to, to survive this issue. Um, we're still wasting too much water. We're still putting a lot of water down our toilets, down the drain that, sh that shouldn't be going there. There's obviously a question of recycling. We need to be recycling our water. Other cities have done it. Vintuk drinks all its sewage water. It's going to take time, it's going to take infrastructure. That is a really, really important thing to do. Experts could not predict the severity of the drought until it was very late. As a result, the city was unprepared for this water crisis, despite its attempts to raise awareness. To survive this, we must reduce our water consumption immediately and recycle. Groundwater from aquifers is our best option in the short term, but desalination can help in the long run. Most importantly, do not panic we can get through this.